Right, I think we move now to a series I would just describe as very funny, which was Team Heretics versus SK Gaming. Bruh. Right, yeah, let's just come right out of the gate. I know he's mm-hmm. a boy, I like him too, and I certainly would indeed love to see him play on a team like Vitality in the future. But I'll tell you what, Niski just didn't come to play this game. <laughs> like, first oh, of all, no, how many Niski times did he eat the first blood or die early? And then, mate, he did in game three one of the most mentally ill packages I've ever seen. Where he yeah. went in, when, by the way, I think like his top player wasn't even there at the time. He went in and just was st- stuck on the wall 5v1. And then obviously, Herex is like, well, no, SK is like, well, we're not following this up. And he just got fucking wrecked. He just got the package. He just got off the fountain. It's like, what? He just did this whole series, bro. Like, what is this? What yeah, is I mean, this? It, it was terrible. But, like, I just don't even know why they're picking Corky for Niski anyway. Like, his whole thing is, like, roaming, making plays, enabling things. Yep. Corky is literally the opposite of all those yes. things. Corky is the is the is Larson pick, bro. Yes. If you want to if you want to play Corky, have somebody like Larson that's good at farming. They're going to like hit their two items at an early point in the game. They want to be getting every single side wave and then later on they carry the game. That's just not how the team functions ever. So I don't even know why he's on the pick. But yeah, I mean, uh, Niski was overall pretty bad in the series. I thought they should have just ran back to Talia. Like no, even a perfect if, even pick if he, for him, yeah. It's a great pick for him. And just because he had a not great game on it doesn't mean that he can't completely pop off. Like this guy has carried so many games in LEC on that pick. It's something that's just so core to how he plays the game. So I just didn't like the, 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 um, the draft and the game felt super weird from SK. I mean, game two went from them having a massive lead and the game being completely over to them just stalling out. And suddenly Flocket is just 2k gold up on, on Exekick. Extremely weird game. Just feels like they have no idea how to actually progress games and, I think that, that honestly, all those losses earlier in the split, they just fucking broke this team. Like, they had so many games early in the split where it was a guaranteed yeah, win yeah. and they threw in the most yeah. egregious ways over and over again. And I, and I feel like all those losses just made them, like, think, like, holy fuck, we're so shit at, like, Shaw Collie. We have no idea how to play mid to late game. Yes. And they just do nothing now. They don't push their leads because they're so afraid to throw. Yeah, one of my theories on, like, on both being clutch in, like, games and team fights and being, like, anti-clutch, choking, whatever getting triggered, nervous, whatever. One of my theories is, look, obviously the original premise comes from like fundamentals, who's on your team, teamwork. But I also think then what makes it go to one extreme, you either become insanely clutch or you become super shit like this and throw, is like you say, you just lose trust or you gain trust. Like if you always, like I'll give you an example. Last split, BDS knew even if they're behind, if they get the objective, they'll win the team fight against anyone except G2. They knew that and it meant actually they no longer even needed to fucking be ahead in lane or do stuff in the mid game. They knew if we just get to that, team fight we're gonna win it difference is sk like you're saying they've they've betrayed themselves so many times in the weeks running up to this like they just look like this also look like surrender sometimes they just eventually at the end it's like right what moment do we pick to go in and i've said this before the problem i have with exa kick is this dom I actually do think he shows that, like, there are some good ADCs and a couple of very good ADCs in the LEC, but there's also a lot that are just in the middle. Because, mate, he has those games that are monster ones. He gets loads of kills. But I, this guy I would not last in the LPL, I'm telling you right now. Because the amount of fucking times he gets insta-popped at the beginning of a fight, when you need him to carry, is mental. Like, he can, look, if he doesn't, he'll carry the whole fight. But the amount, like, in the LPL... You know this, mate. The junglers and the fucking supports in the LPL would just get on him every time and he would just be blown up immediately. Like, as soon as he dies, the fight's over. You just can't win if you're SK. And, and he's like the main win condition to me. Yeah, I mean, he he just he just has that one quality that we always rag on people for. He is He's the opposite of reckless. Like, yes. he will just always die in the team fight. He's every so aggro, single time he? he's going to die. So aggro. Yeah, I mean, it's not even that he's so aggro. It just feels like his reaction and like his spatial awareness is just not accurate at all like he'll be sitting with no flash and his flash will come up will be coming up in 15 seconds and he'll be positioning like he already has flash and he'll just instantly die i mean uh, on the niski int like you remember when niski inted with the package that was really fucking bad they were gonna lose drake for that for sure what turned that into a mega catastrophe is then exekick inted right after oh yes like, no. yes he he like he was like okay niski you you fucking sent it like he got jealous sure. or some shit and then he just jumped in there too he's like i'm fucking inting too and you just see him just fly into the fight just run straight into wonder and then wonder just kills him it was so weird man like i don't know i, I feel like he just has no idea how to like play a team fight as an ad carry like he has no value on his life in a, in a team fight 
And the worst thing is, when I was watching this series, thinking of what my angle was going to be, because I thought it was going to be 2-0, like you say, I was going to focus on the fact that, like, Team Heretics somehow could never all get together and group up in team fights, or they were always split apart, and they couldn't keep the carries together. The joke is they won one of those fucking games. <laughs> they actually won one of those games. And then in game three, this is why, sadly, I actually have no hope for Team Heretics. You know what? There's one positive in this series I've got to point out, which is I was saying this the whole regular season. I do think people overrated the Zviru guy right because essentially his job was not be it's like the people who are not dom his job was not be perks all he had to do was not be perks and just don't die which is all he did and then he wasn't he wasn't carrying games it was other people like he was just doing all right but you get to now i'll tell you what is it so he had some of the good azir games he had some good moves he actually looked pretty decent but what else was there what the fuck else did they have in this team like i really feel like team heretics mate i actually feel sad they won this series because going forwards they're not going to get team fights like this against anyone else mate how are they going to win like this team for real they're so fucking... And also, even if they win a fight, how are they going to end the game? This team doesn't... In the regular spot, I thought they had half-decent macro. I don't know what the fuck it is in this series, mate. They look lost. Yeah, they look lost. I mean, I think the main thing that I would I would say about this team is like... Zwyru actually did step up in key moments, which I thought was really important because I don't think Yankos had like that insane of a oh, series and neither did Wonder. Like they, yeah. had, they had pretty like mediocre yep. series for their standards. And there was times where if Zwyru, Zwyru did not step up and carry the game, yes. they would have just lost. So yes. that showed me something about him as a yeah, player yeah. that he wasn't just going to be because you see like a lot of players, they join <laughs> they join teams like this and they realize that it's like, OK, I'm playing with a bunch of veterans and they think that their job is to just not run it down and that yes. like they'll end up winning the game anyway. He actually realized in the games where it's like they're not fucking carrying me in this game. Like Rex, I is super behind. I need to step up. I got to make shit happen. And he did that in, in, in at, at multiple different moments. So it, it gave me some like, just it gave me some like type of feeling about his mindset. He seems like he's just like not a pussy, you know, like he's, he's not, he's willing to do what is needed in the game. And he's not afraid to potentially look bad while trying to carry the game, which is a quality that I admire. Yeah, especially for a rookie. So, yeah, of course. Yeah, especially for a rookie. It feels Respect. like he's actually taking the, making the most out of his, uh, his, his job. But yeah, if they play like this in future series, they just can't beat anyone left. Like, I don't know who they could, who, who could they beat left uh, like, no, out no, of no all one. the teams that are left? Like, it's logically, actually impossible. Yeah, like, think about it, right? Let me have a look what the bracket obviously is. So, so okay, like, Fnatic, they're going to lose to already. I mean, I, all those problems that we just listed for Fnatic, how's the Rex going to take advantage of that? They're probably just going to lose. Even if they mm -hmm. beat them, Mate, let's say they play Vitality. Vitality would fucking murk this team. What are you talking about? Like, Vitality's yeah. not exactly awesome, but they look way better than this team. Mad Lions, I think, would do the same thing. I mean, Mad Lions look pretty that's, sketchy, but like... That's a bit more I, on I, the fence, but I'd still trust them to win, though. They're at least cohesive, mate. Yeah, I mean, at least they have some type of play style, so... I just think that other people need to, to step up. Look, like, on this team, the whole idea of your team is that you have 80 carry. You have an 80 carry. You have a carry mid and a carry bot. Your 80 and your mid are... Pretty high floor players. They're pretty much never inting the game, but yep. they're not going to be super far ahead. Yes. So everyone else needs to perform at a reasonable level or like the team is just not going to be close enough in goal to actually win a fight or like use any of the strengths they should have with like, you know, Trimby on the team. Somebody who's good at choosing fights. Yanko's good eye for the game. They're not going to be able to use that because they'll be too far behind. That's also for me why they were so lackluster in these playoffs, mate. Because in the actual regular spell, I thought Jankos was having like a turnaround. He actually looked pretty good. I, I credited him more than the Zviru guy. But I'll tell you what, if you took like real Razork and just put him instead of Jankos in this series, dude, they would have won this way easier. Would they? they would actually be pretty good. Jankos was just off. Everything was off today's reads, fucking times to go in when he's getting caught. Like, that's I mean, the mechanics were off, which oh, is like everything. something that. Yeah, he couldn't even get that fucking five volt breaker. What was that? What was some yeah, other I mean, shit? It was, it was tough. It was tough. <laughs> I mean, that's the thing that people always try to make it seem about Yankos. They're like, oh, he's just old and he has no mechanics. It's like, no, generally he has pretty yeah, good yeah. mechanics. Like, he's yeah. one of the better Lee Sin players yes. in the LEC right now. Like, we've seen Isma's Lee Sin. Yes. We've seen other people try to play Lee Sin. Like, he has pretty good mechanics normally. And that's why he's still an elite level jungler. But this series, he just didn't have it. Like, he actually looked old. Yes. No, I always think when people say that, like, first of all, it's a meme. But the other thing is, they also don't understand at this point in his career, he's not like a 19-year-old, fake 19-year-old, LPL jungler, like, who just goes balls deep on every dive. Like, I'm going to use mechanics and outplay them. Like, obviously, he actually uses the amount of mechanics you need to make smart players and move around the map. The problem is, this is when you can see where he doesn't have the mechanics. When he had nothing here, yeah, he just, he's toothless. It's nothing, he, normally to me, he makes the right player. Therefore, you don't need to outplay mechanically. So everyone's saying that he has no mechanics. Look, you got it right in this one instance, but aside from that, you're wrong. So don't be a fucking sheep and just say yes because other people tell you to say yes.
that came from a kinder egg, right? Whatever. We're not a sponsor, okay, nice. but again, I just like to bring props every now and then. The other thing to say, because <laughs> by the way, the re- that, that's my whole take. That's why I said it'd be funny. SK was trash. They deserve to lose. Even mm-hmm. though, actually, if you could go back in spring and sort of just like pause the game every fi- after the first 15 minutes and there was like a coach timeout, they'd win half those games. That's the stupidest thing of all. Like, they actually looked all right early in the split. Trash now. They deserve to be out. And then Erex, like I say, win, but it's like they win in a way where it just saps all hope you have, like, Oh, well, I guess that, that's it then. Especially because they also lost to fucking BDS, who was... Everyone who loses to BDS now, you know before, Dom, this is where BDS don't know that it gets worse. You know before when they were really good, and I said it's a shame that they're the gatekeepers of the region, basically, because like you want them to be third or fourth. If they're actually second, what does it say about the region? Bro, they're not even that team anymore, and they can still gatekeep these motherfuckers. I don't get it. They're actually actively like a bad team. Like, we'll get to the other one. To see more cool, funny, interesting clips based on topics from my content well subscribe to this channel then or you know be a pleb and don't